What is up guys welcome back to Lesser Athletes I'm Chadwell and today like always is an interesting video on the channel like it seems like always. Uh, today is a grading draft picks uh, for the top 20 picks and uh, I'm joined today by Hanad. Hanad here. Hello. Hello everyone. Welcome back and, and uh, uh, I'm excited. Yeah it's gonna be pretty fun. We're gonna kind of go in a little snake order. I'll say a pick, and then he'll say a pick first, and then. But we have both of our grades. We have both of our grades. They could be different. I know Hanad's grades. He doesn't know my grades, so could contradict each other. Could um, very much well uh, be completely different picks. But you'll have to see in the video. Um, a very crazy draft class. I do have to say there were some steals. There was some uh, fallers. There was some reaches. Uh, all of the above. So. Do you want to start out, Hanad? Oh, yeah, why not? So, okay. um. Wait, well, actually, I think I actually I started out on this one, actually. All right, that's fine. I, lied, I, that's I, lied, fine. I, I just got baited, man. Okay, all right, okay. that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. So no, you got it. You we'll got start it. off with Victor Webinyama. You know, the generation prospect in my grade for this is, of course, an A. Um, Victor Webinyama, generational prospect, somebody that is obviously um, whoever got the first pick gets him and. We're not going to see a prospect like this probably for a long, long time. Um, but it is going to be interesting to see what happens with Spurs. But of course, no matter what, overall with the prospect, the fit with the team, what's needed with the team, and what the team drafted on, this is a perfect pick. And I'll take it away. All right. So for my uh, grade for the Spurs, I gave them an A+++++++. Plus, 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 plus. Five pluses. I said Chad was three because that's weak. You got to know the generational player Victor Webanyama is such a huge pick for the Spurs. Overall, for like market wise, his value to that team is going to be insane. He's literally going to be great for the next how many years. He's a still super young, everything. 7 5. I mean, he's literally a unicorn times 10. Or like LeBron said, he's an alien or something yeah. like that, bro. He is different. And uh, the Spurs got a, the, the, like the best luck, I would say. I would, if I'm a Spurs fan, I'm like the happiest person on the planet. So, I mean, <laughs> great pick for the Spurs. I'm not going to lie. So, everyone knew that, though. It was expected. Very good pick. Okay, now you're, I think that you're starting off with number two, Brandon Miller. Okay. So, for the Hornets, I gave him a minus. I think that, obviously, everyone wanted Scoot to go to the, everyone wanted Scoot to go to the Hornets as the, he should have been the second pick in this draft, but Brandon Miller, for the fit, was more, I think it was more important for the Hornets at least, because you know, you already have a very ball dominant guard in LaMelo, and Brandon Miller is an excellent shooter. So I mean like, that's a good person to have around LaMelo, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have an issue with it to be honest, but I gave the Hornets an A- minus for this pick, because it wasn't a bad pick at all for them, but you know, Scoot was always, would have been nice, you know? Yeah, I agree, but uh, my grade on this, which Shanai doesn't know, is a B. It is straight up an a B on this, only yeah. because, listen, the the Hornets is a good organization. Uh, actually, kind of questionable at times, but an organization yeah. that is going to pick off a of fit. We've seen fit picked before. Uh, Michael Kidd Kid Gilchrist was a player that was picked off a of fit, and um, if you don't know the name, that's that's the reason. It's because they picked off a of fit. Um, the way that I see it is that the franchise is in a point uh, where they should draft off fit. Um, when you have much needs at different positions and need uh, a lot of everything, it feels like. Your players are either older, your players uh, aren't as well yet, or they're super young and not really promising. Um, you need somebody that could be an, a generational type player, and that was Scoot. Um, Brandon Miller, though, I guess is a wing, so it's not a horrible pick. Um, Originally, this was a B plus, but I'm being a little harsher just because I think missing out of Scoot is something we're going to look back for for a long time. And Scoot Henderson, especially going to the Blazers, I think is going to work well. So uh, we'll have to see. But I guess let's go to number three. Um, speaking of Scoot, and I'll start off. Uh, my grade for this was an A plus. And the reason why I give this an A plus, because originally an A for me, but I like an A plus a little better, is because... For the Blazers, this gives you a lot of options to do. Getting Scoot Henderson, and spot probably better than a Brandon Miller especially, getting a Scoot Henderson gives you a lot of flexibility to potentially um, look at teams to trade for Scoot Henderson. The Pelicans wanted Scoot Henderson. There's a reason why they wanted Scoot Henderson and not Brandon Miller is because they look 
better uh, with a, a playmaking point guard in Scoo Henderson that can also facilitate, that can also be crazy athletic and drive to the rim, score in the mid-range. Um, Scoo Henderson is probably, other than a Victor, of course, is probably the best uh, um, trade value piece in the draft from two to whatever position. So let's say the Blazers do want to build around Dame, and they talk to Dame about maybe going in a certain direction. They can trade Scoo Henderson. Now, let's say Dame is traded. Dame is traded. Scoo Henderson has the keys to the franchise, and you can build easily off a good point guard. And especially, I feel like starting off of a good point guard as your main uh, uh, franchise player allows you to know what your point guard wants and knows what your point guard needs, and you can build around that. And there's a lot of, uh, I feel like, a lot of wings in the next upcoming drafts. Uh, in 2024 and 2025 so you're fine with a skew henderson there's some centers too coming out skew henderson would fit very well with your team and that's why it's an a plus for me okay uh for me in portland i gave them an a personally uh and i have some case scenarios for this situation in portland so if dame is traded this offseason which i've heard a lot of reports saying he isn't but knowing Damian Lillard in this offseason and his Instagram lives or whatever he's been saying. All <laughs> the his, Miami bro. live video, too. Dude, the Mi it's like Miami Heat trade or whatever. Dude, I'm sick, bro. That man is <laughs> wants to be out, but it does not want to be I'm out. Sick. I swear. Bro, but uh, I think if he doesn't get traded, it's probably a B. Like, I, I think, th I, I mean, for the amount of guards they have in Portland, I don't know. That Scoot Henderson... Dame fit would be interesting. I think that would be fun. But then they're just putting. Are they just gonna put Anthony Simons to like the bench? Yeah. Who's just a twenty point per game scorer? I feel like that would be off putting. And I don't think you could put him at small forward because I mean he's too short for that. I think overall. So I don't think shifting over any of these players would be a good thing for them. But um, I think if the Blazers decide to trade Dame or even trade Scoot in general, I think that. If they, they're probably going to get a really good player in return for Scoot, or if they keep him and trade Dame away, then I mean they're going to get they're going to get their Scoot Henderson, the point guard that they want, their like future like I don't know their future great point guard I would say right yeah and I think he is he is going to be another generational talent that I'm excited to see for in this league as long as he's in the right situation and not either on the bench for Dame or uh, I mean yeah I mean. I just we'll hope he. See. I we'll hope he gets. I hope he gets. I hope he gets somewhere that he needs to be. Like you know, somewhere good. I agree. I agree. Right. So, I'm to a men Thompson. Mm -hmm. And I'll start it off with the Rockets getting an A here, and I think that a point guard that isn't KPJ is a good thing. It's a good thing to, for a starting point guard. I think uh, the talent that Amen Thompson has on the playmaking end of everything is going to be very good for the Rockets. Jalen Green is not going to be. Uh, what would I call a bonehead player anymore? <laughs> um, I call Jalen Brown a bonehead all the time, but you know, uh, <laughs> Jalen Green, I think that would be good for an Ime Udoka led Rockets team, which with their later pick, which we will talk about later. I think this team is very solid now with their starting five potentially and their bench and their starting six man, which is probably going to be Kevin Porter Jr. barring any trades. And I think the Rockets just gained a really, really, really good pick. And I think that they should be happy with this draft in general because they, I think they were one of the biggest winners of this draft next to the Spurs, if anything. Yeah, I have to agree. My grade on this is an, also an A. Um, Amen Thompson really uh, elevates the athleticism that um, the Houston Rockets have. Um, and something that's very much missing for the Houston Rockets offense and the Houston Rockets in general is someone that to uh, really pass the ball and to really get shot creation for the other team. There's a reason why Jabari Smith was like in the low end uh, of contested shots and he was always contested for shooting shots and that's why he was so inefficient at times. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, getting someone like Amen Thompson who could play the ball, who could be someone that can drive in, who could honestly help a Sangoon to pass the ball a little bit more because he's somebody that can drive in and really score on the ball, especially being a taller point guard, is very nice and compliments, I feel like, all the players' of the game. Um, KPJ has been always somebody I said fits better as a six-man role and should always be a six-man. He's somebody that does work well off the bench, but he can't be a starting point guard in this league. We already seen him try, and it doesn't really work out. Um, especially also he's more of a shot creator and someone that tries to score the ball more and you really need a passer in uh, for the Rockets 
Granted, uh, James Harden has been talking about coming back there. Does this happen now with Amen Thompson? I don't know. Especially the fact that uh, Cam Whitmore also fell to the Rockets. Now you have two amazing young players that you can work with for maybe not next year, but the year after that, you can really compete. So there's a reason why it's an A for me. It just fits perfectly with what they have. And an Ime Doka type player with athleticism, uh, somebody that can really elevate the defensive end for uh, Amen Thompson that's super underrated. So, yeah, I really like the pickup uh, for the Rockets. Now at five, uh, Asar Thompson will start with me again. Uh I really like this pick. Shocking pick. I did not think Asar Thompson would be going to the Pistons at all. We were all shocked. You got to watch the live video of all of our live reactions. That was one of the funnier videos watching back. But I gave him an A-. minus. It fits very, very well. And I was I was actually shocked that uh, they went with Asar Thompson. But I think it was really the perfect fit for them. Uh, Jairus Walker would also be nice. Cam Whitmore now finding out about all this behind-the-scenes type deals. Maybe it didn't work out with him. Um, and it does make sense when the Pistons were thinking about trading back potentially because a Cam Whitmore uh, wasn't well, and they talked about Cam Whitmore didn't really fit what they wanted, and there wasn't anybody at five they absolutely wanted. But picking a star Thompson fits well. I've talked about how he's the glue guy. He's somebody that defensively can work very, very well, can play the wing, somebody that could also play probably one through four uh, with his uh, playmaking and facilitating maybe a little, little better. Um it just fits very, very well with what the Pistons have right now. And somebody that I think Monty Williams could very much well uh, uh, upgrade their game with having hit uh, Monty Williams as a coach. Okay, for my uh, my grade for this one was a B plus for the Pistons. I think that this pick like really much complements the backcourt of uh, Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham. And I think that Azar Thompson, out of all people... I I think the defense the defense is gonna be pretty big for them if anything I think that back or I guess like they're gonna be what is it the front court of uh what is it I guess that total front court of Durin whatever combo of Bagley <laughs> Wiseman whatever the hell is going on in that yeah. center position in, in on the Pistons but I think I was I was kind of expecting uh Jarius Walker here uh oh, I but I, I i think a solid pick was the i think the solid pick for the pistons was azar thompson i think he fits perfectly into that into that starting five as long as th that like god damn that center thing is going to be yeah. messed but overall i think is i think it's a solid pick i think a b plus is fair for it but it could go higher depending on how the pistons are next year i'm very excited to see though what happens here yeah okay so um for the magic uh, here I gave him a B plus. I feel like Chadwell might give him a harsher grade here, but <laughs> I think <laughs> I think I think a playmaker is it? Like, I think a good playmaker, like an official, like top tier point guard playmaker for the Magic isn't bad. But this probably means that one of their guards are probably being traded this off season. If anything, I think Suggs is gone or Cole Anthony. I've heard is gone possibly too. And they're, I think they're running like they have those four Markel as well, or the, like those four in total. I'm interested to see what happens with that log jam and the guard position for them. But I mean, the pick isn't bad. Uh, I think he, if I'm correct, he was also a pretty good like. I, th I forgot if it was. A, I think he's a lengthy guy, like a defender yeah, type of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah, he's a good defender. Guy. So I mean, like that's not bad for the Magic of anything, uh, especially with how, I think like their, I think their best defenders are like. I mean, Jonathan Isaac, if he comes back and he's like actually like a solid defender again. Uh, Paulo, I don't know. Yeah, yeesh. very Yikes. big yeesh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's going to, I don't know if he's ever going to come back to that form. But uh, Paulo, if he defender as well. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., solid. But I mean, overall, I think he, he, he will bolster that magic lineup as long as uh, one of those people are traded from that team. But we will see with that positional log jam over there. Yeah, my grade on here is a little bit harsher. It's a B minus. Um, I the thing is Anthony Black on my big board. I love Anthony Black. I think he's going to be a great NBA player. Um, it's just the fit that really scares me with the Magic, with how crowded uh it is in the guards position. It feels like um. I feel like someone is going to be on the moves. Lakers have had interest in Jalen Suggs. Maybe Jalen Suggs is thrown in for maybe future assets uh, for the Magic. Maybe now assets for the Magic. Um, I think that Cole Anthony is going to probably be on the way. They've already shopped Cole Anthony before. Markel Fultz seems like he's going to stay with the team. So yeah. my worry, my worry really is, is that 
when you're the Magic and your main concern, I feel like this whole thing was wing depth and three point shooting. Is Anthony Black at um six when you had a lot of other options that were de- that were wings and also be able to shoot the ball is that really the answer that you could have probably gone especially when at 11 there was a great guard options that still was a very good option maybe this is someone that the magic really fell in love with and they love absolutely so of course they're gonna go with anthony black but it's just i'm very scared when it comes to um Where's the offense going to be like and how's it going to be like? And at 11, we're going to talk about it. Did you really solve the issue right there? I don't know. So um, it's going to be interesting, but I do like Anthony Black as the player. If it was just, let's say he went to the Jazz, I would have gave this as like an A, okay? It's just the magic. It really scares me to see um, where anthony black is going to go and if this honestly defensively this team is probably going to be one of the better defensive teams in the future um with how tall the size is and it feels like the magic is trying to find a lineup of if you're not six seven you're off the team um so we'll have to see we'll just have to see um but at number seven uh we'll start off with Bilal kulabali um a crazy interesting pick uh this is the wizards that pick not the pacers at this spot and i gave it a b minus um kind of shocking i feel like to some people but i gave a b minus because i feel like with the options that you had with the wizards um you could have gone with somebody else that looked what would fit maybe a little better with jairus walker um taylor hendrix taylor hendrix is probably a pick i would have actually liked a little bit better for them just because um Someone that is very good at shooting the ball. Ball Cool Bali is a project piece. And I get that you're a team tanking, so it does make sense. But was it a little bit of reach, kind of, for the Wizards? Um, but it does, it really does make sense for them. That's why it's not as much as like a C or something like that. But my worry is um, with all the options that were still available, it probably could have been a maybe a better pick for you. Um, but I do like Bilal Koulibaly. I think he's going to fit well with the team. I think he could do well. I'm very scared with how the Wizards treat forwards. Um, looking at forwards, they've uh, picked in the past lengthy forwards. Um, just actually forwards in general. Troy Brown Jr., Corey Kispert, Rui Hachimura. It's not looking good. A lot. Uh, Denny also, which we've seen Denny uh, kind of elevate his game. But if he still, um, we'll have to see. New uh, executives could be different, but just a little scared with Balako Bali, but I do like him as the player. Okay, for me, I gave the Wizards an A minus here. I think this is a fun. I think this is a fun little project player for the Wizards of anyone. I think that it's a good risk. Um, his size is insane. Like he has a seven two wingspan or something like that. Uh, projects to be a pretty good def- like defensive player overall. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely I think I think a pretty big project. But I'm excited for how he, how he's going to be on the Wizards. Because I mean, like, even though the Wizards have had some really, really questionable uh, uh, development issues with their pro- like with their prospects over the last couple of years, they've only drafted around like eight nine range. So I mean, I guess that makes sense. But I mean, I think they just needed that that special factor of like someone who's unknown. But I feel like, or not, I wouldn't say unknown, but like you know, someone who isn't like highly wasn't highly expected to be up here. And I mean, they needed someone to like give them that maybe a little push, like someone that could just like, you know, reset their whole, you know, I guess they reset their whole rebuild, be exciting, start off with a new player that honestly, I think will be pretty interesting for them overall athletic defensive. I think defensive defensive potential is there a lot. Very good defensive potential, at least his size insane. But yeah, I think the Wizards, I think it's a good start for their rebuild overall. Yeah. All right. For the Pacers. Uh, I might have changed my grade here, but I mean, I, I, st- I still go with that B plus uh, for the Pacers. I think Jarese Walker, defensive monster, is going to be awesome. Uh, I think that they need, I think more defense to that team uh, is going to be interesting with them. At least they have, uh, what do you call it? They have Ben Matherin, they have Tyrese Halliburton, they have Buddy Heald, all questionable defenders, I'd say. Or at least, comp- like, that Miles Turner. Miles Turner is sol- very solid yeah. rim protector. But, I mean, obviously adding a great defensive player to this team is going to be very good. Especially, I think he slipped a little bit compared to, I feel like, I think he could have gone higher overall. So, I mean, the, the Pacers getting him, especially after trading down, 
for him, I think that's pretty solid for them overall. So I we I wouldn't complain about it for the Pacers. Over, so I think it's a good I think it's a good pick for them. Yeah, uh, my grade for this was an A minus, very close to yours too. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, the defensive ability is going to fit very very well with Miles Turner, especially with the strong body of Jairus Walker that is already there. Um, especially with what you want to see for people, especially in the lottery, is are they upgrading? Are they uh, developing into better players? And Jairus Walker has developed his game uh, since his freshman year, um, for his freshman year, I should say, and. Um, it's very good to see development uh, happening for a player. He's developing a sh uh, shot right now, and he might not have that shot for the next couple years, but you have people that are offensively already have a shot. You mentioned all the three people, Ben, Dick Matherin, Tyrese Halliburton, and uh, Buddy Heald. Those are players with a shot. Miles Turner can also shoot the ball now from three. Those are all players with a shot. Jairus Walker doesn't need to be that shooter. He can be someone that is that Swiss Army Knife guy that can pass the ball, rebound the ball. He's learning how to shoot the ball it's a good fit for them and it's a really good especially if the pacers want to try to compete for the next uh if they want to compete next year or the year after that so here at nine is taylor hendrix and i gave it a b i think taylor hendrix fits the team well i think it's not a crazy pick it's not a horrible pick it's just a good pick it's a good pickup for them uh really fills their four position up and something that I've kind of learned from the Jazz with this whole draft is that uh, the Jazz clearly are looking like they're going to be a team that isn't going to be competing next year. Might sound uh, crazy to maybe one of the lesser athletes guys on here, but if you look at their draft, what do they pick? They picked players that are a little inefficient at points. They picked players that are freshmen, especially. They didn't pick, po no player was not a freshman that they picked. So, uh, or not another player was not a freshman that they picked. It was only freshmen. It was uh, Taylor Hendricks, Keontae George, who we'll be talking about, Bryce Sensible. All players that I have talked about that are sometimes a little inefficient at times, but all players that have very high upside. So it kind of shows that the Jazz are kind of looking for the future of, hey, we don't need a win now. Let's get some good assets. And Taylor Hendrick fits that. Someone that can shoot the ball defensively is very well and is going to be a nice and could potentially be a small ball center if they really need to. Uh, say Walker Kessler takes out, you put Ty Taylor Hendricks also with the second unit. It's going to fit well with them. And the Jazz, I mean, Kessler's trying to learn how to shoot threes. It's a great team and it's going to be a great pickup for the Jazz. Uh, so I gave the Jazz a B here. Uh, I think that he was a solid pick. Uh, the fit might be a little questionable, is all I would say. Because that team is very, 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 like, tall in the front court, I'd say. It reminds me of, like, if you remember, uh, if I remember correctly, it was, like, the Cavs, like, two years ago or a year ago. When the, I think they had Markinen, Mobley, and Jared Allen all on their three front court players, and they were all like six eleven and above or whatever, yeah. or like six ten and above. So I mean, I think I think Hendricks is like six nine, but I mean, Hendricks's play style is more catered towards power forward. I guess you could maybe shift Markin into the small forward, and I think that would be fine. But overall, I think it's a solid pick. Uh, pretty good defender, everything like that. Lob threat, can't get mad at that, honestly. Yeah, it works very well. Okay, up to mm -hmm. ten. Halfway there. All right, so I'm gonna go quick with this one because I know Chadwell has a good amount to talk about this one at eh. least. Uh, eh. I, okay, I gave the Thunder a B minus here. Uh, the fit is awkward. The fit is awkward. Uh, but Lou Dort replacement, smiley face. That's all I have to say. <laughs> that's potential all you have to say? Lou Dort. That's Lou Dort potential Ru Lou Dort replacement. Okay. I think Casey Wallace is good though. I okay, think he's good. okay. I'll say I'll say what I think, and I gave it a C plus. But I'm very, I'm very harsh. I'm very harsh, okay? But mm -hmm. and it's for a couple reasons. Draft grades, it's a C plus. How Casey Wallace is, is very well. Should I uh, should I not trust Presti? No. So, but I'm going to give it a C plus for now, okay? And I think in the next upcoming days, I will definitely keep increasing, increasing, increasing that pick. Um, Casey Wallace is the best defender other than Wemby in this draft. Uh... Some Pressy has talked about how uh Kaysen Wallace, I don't remember the exact quote, but he's basically saying um the players that uh don't want to get the hard work done, he will do it and he'll be the one to grind it out with uh his grit and everything. He's somebody that's gonna be a culture player. Look at a Marcus Smart um as like that. I've talked about how he's like Marcus Smart. And the Thunder, 
Our second unit is very, very questionable when it comes to guard position. Our main guards are, of course, Shay and Giddy. But who is our true, true point guard? And that's really in the ba in the second unit, a Trey Man. And is Trey Man really a second unit type uh, guy? Not really. Uh, that's why uh, you saw Lou Dort being our facilitator and play, trying to play, make, and pass the ball in our second unit, and it did not go well. Well, now we have Kaysen Wallace. Kaysen Wallace is easily somebody that can be uh, very, very well in the backcourt, or uh, in the second unit, I meant, and um, can really pass the ball defensively really well. Maybe this is somebody that later on is somehow started in the lineup um, just somehow, some way. This is somebody like a Davion Mitchell that is going to be very well at maybe guarding the best player. And having Lou Dort and Kaysen Wallace on the team, I first immediately was like, maybe this is a trading Lou Dort situation because of uh, how they've talked about trading Lou Dort before. But having them both honestly fits very, very well. They're gonna We're going to have a very uh, offensive team and defensive team at the same time. Um, it just fits very well, I think, with the Thunder. Uh, when you really break it, break it down on paper, probably not. So that's why it's a little bit lower for me. But the reason why it's a full C plus is because if you're the Thunder, and this is me questioning a little bit, if you're the Thunder, you've seen how Chet is probably somebody that um, look at him going against Kenny Lofton, um, uh, summer league. Look at him going against traditional centers. Do you really want Chet Holmgren being your main center? Probably not. I like him more as a four, like how Kristoff's was. Kristoff's Porzingis, I should say. Um, I think a Derek Lively would have fit perfectly with the Thunder, especially with the needs of rebounding and shot blocking. Somebody that can is learning how to shoot the ball and can sometimes pass. Um, it's just very, very interesting to see uh, them go with guard position. And they kind of need wings too. I mean... Gray Dick was still on the board, uh, but I wouldn't have gone Gray Dick probably if I was a Thunder. Um, but yeah, that's my that's the only reason why it's a C plus. I probably will grow on this pick. I'm already starting to grow. You could hear how I'm already talking good about it, but um, that's why I'm starting with a C plus for them. Is what I have mm -hmm. to say. Uh, I know who Gray Dick would have been good on, and that's that next pick right there. Go go on, Chad. Will. Okay, number eleven, Jet Howard. Wow. <laughs> Seeing Jet Howard's name called Yikes. was one of the craziest things I I never would have thought in this draft. That's why I'm giving them a D plus. Um Yeah, yikes. live reaction was crazy if yikes. you go watch that video. I have so many things about this. I Jet Howard is a probably a great guy. But for you to get drafted eleven to the magic is wild. Like I get the magic. You want somebody that can shoot the ball. You want somebody to score. And you got Jed Howard. He can do that. But you definitely had way better options in Grady Dick and Jordan Hawkins who, in my opinion, undoubtedly are the two better three-point shooters than Jet Howard. Um, easily can shoot the ball way better. And they both have potentials at potentially... Uh, they both potentially could do more like defend... Uh, they can also, Gray Dick, let me just talk about, can defend taller, can, uh, has just more of a passing ability too. Jet Howard doesn't really have that. He does, he's just a, basically a shooter, which is good for the magic. I get that. But if you're trying to run this big lineup that everyone can do everything almost, it feels like Jet Howard should not be the pick for you. And that's why it's a D plus at 11. Uh, I gave them a C for basically the exact same reasons. They could have tried. They could have traded down. If I would be real Easy. with them, like they they had they had the they had the six pick. Like they could have just traded down more if they really wanted to. Like Jet Howard was did not need to go that high, and I think Grady Dick would have been a much better draft asset at the tenth. At the, sorry, not the tenth, but the eleventh pick for the Magic. But yeah, I mean it was very questionable. Uh, Let's hope that he turns into Michael Porter Jr. That's that's basically what they hope for. Basically, never swing the ball, never defend, just just shoot. And but he's a shooting guard instead. But still, I mean, I very questionable pick, bro. He he's just a shooter. That's that's about it. But yeah. that's, that's a it's not really much you can say about that. Okay, so we'll go to the next pick. 
Number 12, Derek Lively. Go ahead, Hanad. Uh, yeah, number 12, I gave the Mavs an A, bro. I mean, I think this is a really solid pick for them, if anything. If they're really losing Christian Wood, I think this is a really good lob target for Luka. Uh, very solid rim protector for them as well. And they traded down for him, so I think that's a pretty big W as well. They got some future. I think they got some... They traded away a contract, if I'm correct. They yeah, traded Bretons away. Yeah, bad contract. And they, I think they got a future compensation for it as well as like draft pick or something. I think maybe a draft pick or something like that. But I mean, I would. I think that's a pretty big W. You get some of that stuff off. You get something off your books and you you get a solid rim protector, young center. Excited for them if in that regard. But yeah, other than that, I think he's. I think Derek Lively is going to be very solid for the Mavs overall. Yeah, my grade for this is an A+. Plus. Um, I think Derek Lively fits exactly what you needed, and now he has a smaller contract than what you, maybe you could have tried to trade it for, um, for maybe a Clint Capella or somebody like that. And this is a young player that you can develop. He's less contract, can shoot the ball, fits, fits perfectly with the, what the Mavs, I think, depths, desperately need. And you trade it back, got a bad contract, which gives you more money in free agency. It's going to be very, very good for the Mavs, and I, overall is a very, very good pickup for them in uh an A plus in my books. Number 13, Grady Dick. Um, my grade for this is an A minus. I really like Grady Dick here. I've talked about uh, in my free agency video how Bogdan Bogdanovich would have been a perfect pickup for them. Grady Dick uh, is somebody that fits the criteria of what I said they kind of need, which is they like their taller players. Well, this is their taller player who can now shoot the ball. They don't really have uh, shooters in the... Uh, uh, for the Raptors, they usually go for people that can't shoot but athleticism's off the roof. Why not get you someone that's taller that can can somewhat defend, is learning how to defend a little bit better, but can shoot the ball excellently? And we saw this in Kansas. Okay, for me, I gave the Raptors a B plus here, and overall, I just said it's a it's a shooter that the Raptors needed after losing their best shooter in Van Vliet. I would say, uh. And I think that the, the height is also fits the Raptors type of play style where they have, or like, I guess their type of, I don't know, I guess they, I wouldn't call it culture or anything like that, but I guess the Raptors, six foot nine and above, play, play solid defense and uh, athleticism off the roof and all that stuff, like Chad Will just said. Overall, I mean, it's a solid pick for the Raptors. I'd say grid shooter for him. I think they needed that overall. So uh, B plus for him. Yep. Uh, and the Pelicans for number 14 and getting Jordan Hawkins. I gave him a B minus here uh, He's a really good shooter uh, Defensive Defensive question of like question marks I'd say with that backcourt if he decides to start with CJ if CJ starts going to the point guard or if they keep Dyson Daniels up there maybe he slides to the bench and I think they would probably be better for him, but I think he's a really good shooter and I think that's a pretty solid pickup for the Pelicans overall they needed a shooter they take that yeah yeah my grade is a b for them uh somebody that could probably do day one us uh, uh help with them a good rotational player but there is like hanad said defensive uh questions i don't know how good jordan hawkins will fully fill out to be but he is someone that can score the ball and shoot the ball um very uh very well when it comes to that and i think it'll work out for them i think it's somebody that they can really try to develop into a better uh player but he's gonna be a day one competitor which is something that you really want if you're the pelicans okay at number 15 kobe buffkin somebody that i absolutely love and that's why i'm giving it a b plus i think the hawks really helped their second unit a lot there's a lot of question marks with their second unit this is someone that can easily score the ball someone that is very good at very much a two-way guard it first fits perfectly for them, and I think overall it's a good pickup for them. And I just it just works out well with what they need for their second unit. Uh, for me, I gave the Hawks a B minus here. I think this would be a really I think this would have been a, a better pick if Dejounte Murray is potentially traded because I think Buffkin's off ball ability will actually complement Trey Young a little better than Dejounte overall. And I think that this is actually a pretty good addition to the second unit if they need if if he decides if they decide to keep Dejounte at least so I'm, I think I'm excited for Buffkin on this team I think he's gonna be a great scorer and shot creator overall so yeah that's my that's my two take on Buffkin yeah number 16 hey okay. number 16 I go for the Utah Jazz and giving me I don't know why I've said this but a B a B is I think Conte George is a good pickup for them overall I think a great I think a great score from the from the three point range overall. Uh, man, I lost my notes here. Uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, uh, it's a really good addition to their core of guys. I think they got over there. He's gonna probably fit pretty well over there. I think he's a she's a shooting guard, so they needed a, I think they needed a new shooting guard because Clarkson's still off the bench. Uh, Colin Sexton is number is the point guard over there. So if they keep him, and okay. yeah, I think I think I think I think he'll I think I think that's an adi- a solid addition to the team overall though. Yeah, my grade on him is a B also. Someone that I think fits perfectly well with the team, uh, somebody at gu- a guard position that can score the ball, is a little inefficient, but that's okay if you're not competing day one. I think he'll work very well. I've talked about how he's like a Jordan Clarkson where maybe some nights he's going to give you 20, 20-something for four straight games. Next couple nights, he's giving you single-digit numbers, but that's okay if you're the Jazz. You can really work with him and his inefficiencies, but he could be someone that if he booms, he's going to be probably one of the better players uh, in this draft class, and it'll work well. Number 17, Jalen hood Shafino. It's a B-plus for me. I think getting somebody that's kind of like D'Lo when it comes to a little taller that can pass the ball very, very well is very good, and you don't have to pay him a lot more money. This is also somebody that maybe won't shoot as well, maybe won't score immediately as well, but he is somebody that can uh, defend better, and I think something that really helped the Lakers was creating a defensive uh, identity. So Jalen hood Shafino at your point guard position would be very well. Is he going to start? Probably not, um, but he could be definitely a good rotational player for the future i think jalen hachafino to the lakers is a b for me uh i think the playmaking ability if they decide to, to give or uh, i think i think delo is gone after this off i think delo is gone this offseason to be honest if yeah. they keep jalen you know i think a good playmaker to take some responsibility off lebron if he still stays with them and we'll see what lebron's decision is he's probably gonna stay overall but i yeah. think he's a solid defender for that team i think the playmaking responsibilities he's not going to score crazy he's probably just going to be like he's just going to be that uh what is it I, i'm trying to think of like a good comparison it's but i mean I can't he's the best comparison i could think yeah. of but yeah a great playmaker can defend that's good enough for the lakers honestly they don't i think their scoring woes are I think if they keep Austin Reeves and Hashimura, which I don't know about that contract situation, I think their scoring is pretty solid. I think their defense just got a bolst- got a little bolstered with this pick. And I think overall, it's not a bad pick overall for the Lakers. I agree. Okay, for the Miami Heat at number 18, I gave them a B plus for, for Jaime Hawkes Jr. And I would say Heat culture. They, you just I think I think it's just a Heat culture type pick. Uh, but overall, he just, he, he can just, like, just a physical person, I would say, just scores in the post, everything like that, but overall, I mean, I think he would be beneficial for the Miami Heat in offense, which they kind of need, but I mean, I think the most, I think the most thing to note here is that he's a Heat culture type player, and that's why, I, I, that's how I view him as, but yeah, I mean, let's chat well with yeah. your choice. So mine is actually a C minus, and the reason why is because mm-hmm. I feel like there was a lot more options that were very good for them. Uh, Noah Clowney, Derek Whitehead could have been somebody that they could bank later if a blow up situation would happen. Uh, Cam for Whitmore the, for the Miami Heat, Cam Whitmore even. That's crazy. I've <laughs> yeah. said that, but Cam Whitmore even somebody like mm-hmm. that would have been very very well for them. Noah Clowney would probably fit a lot better. But I do get that this guy is the kind of Heat cultural player where he is gritty. He is somebody that can immediately day one impact them. Uh, uh, very much an older rookie, older than um, Anthony Edwards, uh, which is crazy to say. Um, it's just it's someone that can try and compete day one, but do I really like it? I don't really know. Um, it could have easily been someone that could have fit way better, maybe gave you day one impact and shoot better. Um, Chris Murray, hint, hint. Uh, I think overall, 18, uh, Hami Hakez. You know, it's just a good, it's just a pick that let's see if it works out well. We'll have to see. Um, number 19, Brain Przemski. Um, I gave this a B. I like it with the fact that uh, this is somebody that could probably give him day one impact with a rotational piece, kind of the do it your all, do all of it type of player. Score the ball, can rebound the ball. He's more of a guard, but he can play the three, I think. And that'll fit well with uh, the Warriors. I think somebody that can really score the ball well for them is going to be much needed. Santa Clara boy going to Golden State. I just like it, and it fits very well. Uh, for me, I would say I think this is a good I think this is a good pickup, but I did give him a C plus here. I think that 
I think his off the what is it? I think off the dribble shooting ability is pretty solid. But uh, I mean, I guess now I think I forgot about the Jordan Poole trade, which could be <laughs> like that he could just play that Jordan Poole role a little. I think a little less uh, shot chucky overall because he's still young. But I mean, like I think it's a solid. I think it's a solid pick. I could have given it a little higher, but I completely forgot about that Jordan Poole trade. So I mean, <laughs> overall, it's not. It's it's a pretty solid. It's a pretty solid uh, pick up for them yeah. overall. Uh, and for number 20, the Houston Rockets, I mean, here, this is just an A+. Plus. I mean, for for a top five projected person, or top, like, we could just say top seven, most likely. Yeah. He was expected to go top seven, probably. For him to drop all the way to 20, and for you to have a pick in that top four, and not even have to take him, and still get him in the 20th pick is absolutely wild. I mean... That is that is a worthy gamble, if anything. I mean, if he fell that far, and they like, if they knew why he fell, and they still got him, I mean, congrats to them, because I think he will. I think he has a lot of potential, especially with that Rockets team. I think he'll slide. He could slide right into that position, or slide right into that team overall. And I'm excited to see what Cam Winmore brings to that Rockets team with Ime Udoka. Yeah, I agree. I gave it an A, an A, not an A plus. Um, and the reason why I didn't give the plus is because. Um, there's obviously behind the scene reasons why he fell to 20 all the way. Um, we've heard that it's because of bad interviews, interviews that didn't go well, bad workouts, individual workouts that with the teams that didn't go well. Um, we've also heard that it could be medical reasons, something with his knee that uh, is happening. Um, I don't know what it will be, but I'd still give this an A because for somebody that had an NBA ready body day one and somebody that, uh, is very much a perfect talent prospect and has um a lot of capabilities that you want in the nba which is somebody that explosive can play uh two through four somebody that is um can defend the ball someone that can score the ball someone that has taken strides it's very well so seeing cam Wimmer follow 20 is a perfect pick up if you're the rockets you had a chance maybe getting him at four say all this stuff didn't happen and now you got cam Wimmer and Amen thompson which is crazy to say so other than that, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, very much a fun one. Wouldn't you agree, Hanad? Yeah, I agree. It was honestly very fun. I had a good time making like my my last like couple picks. You know. Yeah. Those were, they were kind of shorter, but you know, I I still think overall it was a good draft, and I think it was a good rating for both of us. I think Chad will. I think I did better. I think. Okay. I think okay. I had sure. Sure. No, I'm, okay. joking. I'm joking. Well, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the video. We will see you in the next one. Goodbye.